Okay, welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to create a nicely formatted graph, uh, data table and graph for your friction lab analysis. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be it. So I like to leave a little space. I like to leave 1 and A blank so that I can see my borders when I add borders. The first thing you do is you recreate your data table from your page, from your paper, your raw data table. So you have a column that says mass and grams, then you have, uh, what is it next, max static friction, and we did three trials where we collected this value uh, at the same time, the same way, in three trials, trial one, trial two, trial three, and this has units of newtons, so let's put that in, can't forget our units. Then, the next thing we had was we also measured, in each of the three trials, we measured the kinetic friction in newtons. There was a trial 1, trial 2, trial 3. I'm just going to copy this, control C, and then control V to paste, so that I don't have to write it over, uh, rewrite it again. Uh, now I'm going to highlight these three things, double click the line between C and D, and I'm even going to make this smaller too. Escape. Escape takes away the dotted lines. Uh, then I'm going to move this in, make this smaller, highlight G and H, double click the line to auto fit the column width. And then I want to highlight these three cells. I want to merge and center to make them look nicer. Then likewise I'm going to highlight these three, merge and center. And now, max static friction is above the three trials, and max uh, I and the kinetic friction is above the three. I'm going to center everything right now. Uh, I want to I want to plug in my values. I'm, first, though, I'm going to merge and center this. Merge and center, and good. Now I'm ready to create borders. So I I click my mass, and let me make this smaller. I click the box, I hit this button above font, this button, click the arrow, and it brings up the drop down. Then you choose outside borders. Uh, and then rather than click and do outside borders again, you can actually just click on a box and hit control Y to repeat the last thing that you did. Control Y, control Y, we'll be adding an outside border for all of those. Now I'm ready to add in my data that I collected, so I'm going to pause the video and plug in those values. Here's my data. I want to format this a little, put a border around this, so I click the borders above font, choose outside, and then I want to do control Y, control Y, control Y, control Y, whoops, I missed one, control Y, control Y. Oops, I can't do control Y. Why can't I? I don't know. Uh, so I click again, outside borders. If you interrupt, if you interrupt the control Y process, then you won't be able to continue the control Y command. So you have to keep it going without interrupting it. Uh, so you can't like bring up a box or something. You can't bring this up. That interrupts control Y. Okay. Anyway, the next thing. Um, these values all need to be rounded to the same decimal place because they were all collected with the same device. Okay, So where it shows 2.5, it's actually 2.500. But if I try to put in 2.500, I hit enter, and the zeros go away. So instead, what I'm going to do is this. To add the decimal place, hmm, let's see. This one is three decimal places, this one is one, three, two decimal places. The most that any has is three decimal places. So I want them all to have three decimal places. So I click on this button. Uh, that's decrease decimal places. Whoops, wrong way. I want to click on the other one, increase decimal, until they all have three. Perfect. The next thing I want to do is calculate the normal force in newtons. And I've got more stuff coming, so I'm just going to highlight and center all of those so that whatever I type in here is centered straight away. Okay, 
I want to merge and center those, and I'll give borders at the end. Well, I know how to calculate the weight, the force of gravity. I take my mass, I multiply by 9.8. Whoops, but wait a second. The mass has been recorded in grams. You want the mass in kilograms. So you take that value, you divide by a, a thousand, and you multiply by 9.8. When you divide by a thousand, now what you have, what you have now on the left half is the mass in kilograms. Remember that you have to hit equals to tell Excel, here comes an equation. So I hit enter. Um, the reason I typed, the reason I hit B4, B4, so rather than typing in the value 214.5, I just clicked on the cell and then I hit enter because now I can I can get that that cross icon and click and drag down and all of my masses are being uh, manipulated by the same equation. The next thing I want is the uh, let's see the average max static friction in newtons and I want to merge and center these and also I want to wrap the text so it spills onto the next line maybe I want to wrap this text too R -r 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 wrap the text oh gosh long day okay and then after that I, I will also want the average kinetic friction but rather than type it out and reformat I'm gonna hit control C control V to paste make this a little wider and then I'm just going to change max static to kinetic alright the way I find the max static friction is this the, I'm sorry the way I find the average I want to average together these three trials at this one value of mass okay. so I hit equals average open parentheses I click the three trials to average I close the parentheses and then I can click and drag this down and this column then gives me the average the average of the three trials for that mass then I can do the same thing I can just copy and paste control C control V and hey uh oh I'm not averaging the right values for this column I want the average of the three kinetic friction values I want the average of these three so what you can do, uh oh, what just happened? Uh, there's a really really cool trick. You can actually just once you've once you've clicked on the toolbar, uh, once you've clicked, on, I'm sorry, in the equation bar, you see this blue box, and you can actually just click and drag to move the blue box around. Before you click and drag, make sure you have the four arrow icon like this one, and then you click, you drag, and boom enter and now you've got your equation you can drag it down and you are in each case taking the average of the three kinetic friction values highlight all of these center and center go ahead and click this one add an outside border then you want to control Y that control Y control Y control Y control Y we're now ready to add our graph to create your graph hit the insert tab then you click on charts and you want to choose uh, specifically the button where you see just a bunch of dots from that you choose the top left option not this one not the one with lines the one with no lines just data points oh my gosh look at this mess first click on the series and then hit delete then you right click on the graph and choose select data there's all this junk in there, so click it and hit remove. Click, remove, click the series, remove until there's nothing left. Good. Now I want to click the add button. What is my XY pair for this chart? Well, I don't care about a name, so first go to the X values. We've seen that we want normal force on the X axis, then click on the Y values uh, cell or entry point highlight the equals one hit backspace my first graph will be the static friction graph so I'm gonna highlight all of my static friction values you just click and drag in your table 
hit OK, hit OK. For chart title, you can come up with a title, maybe just static friction. Oh, I know, how about coefficient of static friction? Analysis. Wonderful. Then I want to add some axis titles. And the way you do that is, let's see, the way you add your axis titles is you click this plus in the corner, click the axis titles button, or check the box, rather, check the box. And now you have these axis, title, axis titles. Uh, you click, click this once to highlight, click again to enter, then a quick triple click, one, two, three, and I've highlighted the entire text. Then I'm going to do on the x-axis normal force in newtons, like that, except I want my n here, fn, to be subscript. So you hit control plus. Oh, it doesn't work. To subscript that, that n, what you do is you do uh, home, and then you click the font, this button in the corner of the font box, then you hit the subscript right there. OK, and now it's subscripted. I'm going to highlight the variable. Variables are, uh, highlight the variable and italicize it, control I. Variables are italicized, but units are not. And then I'm going to, I'm actually going to copy all of this. Control A to select all, control C to copy. I click this box once, I click it a second time to enter, and then triple click. And then I hit control V. And now I've pasted everything here, but whoa, it's so much bigger. So let me control A to select it all, and then make it like, I don't know, what's, what's good, 14. That looks good. You know what, I'm going to make this one bigger, 14. Uh, but wait, it's not the normal force. It's the static, it's the maximum static friction on the y-axis. So now I've changed it, and that was really quick. To copy it over was much quicker than going through the whole process again. OK. Um, I need a trend line, so you right click. You do add trend line. We want to display, we want linear, that's automatically selected. And we want to see the equation. And then you can get out of that. And move this around, good. A nice equation. Hmm, we're going to talk about the equation, right? Uh, then the last thing I need is I need to measure the fluctuation in these data points. Each of these is an average. So there was actually some fluctuation among the individual trials. They weren't perfectly the same. So here's how we're going to show that fluctuation. Fluctuation in max, I'm sorry, yeah, in max static friction, this is fine, in newtons, and I'm going to merge and center wrap the text to put it onto the next line, have it spill over, control C, control V, and then the next column is fluctuation in kinetic friction. Here I'm going to say equals the equation we've learned for fluctuation is going to be the half of the range of the values. So the way you take the range is you take the maximum of the three equals max, click and drag the three, close parentheses, minus the minimum, or just min, open parentheses, highlight the three again, close your parentheses, hit enter, that's the range, but we want half of that, half of the range is what we learned, so instead of this alone, you click on the formula bar, put parentheses around everything, and then divide by two then control C and control V to paste this down. I'm going to center, give a border, and a border. Now I'm going to copy this over and then click in to the formula, move the references over so that I can get the same formula applied to the three kinetic friction values. Enter. Control C, control V. Right? And I'm going to clear all of this all of the borders and then make my boxes. The last thing to do is add the error bars. This is actually quite easy, uh, and this will be shown to you in the next video.